Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to start off with a Moonport resupply mission and hopefully that'll just go normally and then we can move on to our main missions already underway. The Ganymede Lander and the two Titan shots are what I'm aiming for. If we didn't resupply we'd be able to get through the Ganymede Lander but uh, we would have to resupply before doing the Titan shot bits and those are uh, Saturn SOI entries. I think that one is too. I think that might be a dummy maneuver node. But definitely this one is entering Saturn SOI. So we want to be all nice and ready for that. Uh, this I think is just a maneuver node, but it might be a dummy maneuver. We'll see. So anyway, that is the situation. And well, let's go throttle up. SAS is on. We're basically lined up with the moon. And let's get some distance because it's loud. Ignition! And launch. Okay, and we're off. So lately I haven't... Uh, been making too many realism overall videos. It's been a while since I entered this save and that's because I'm just getting over summer and trying to get back into the swing of things. As I'm sure many viewers are doing as well. Okay, booster set. And everything went well with the boosters. All right, here we go, time for Miko. And separation, separation, and ignition. And the J2 is lit, the first stage did its thing, and fairing separation. Okay. Okay, we are about to make orbit. We should probably pitch up a little bit. I don't mind it being a little lopsided because we're a little bit high on this end anyway. Okay, shut down. 287 by 189. Let's get the antennae out. And then we'll apply a transfer to the moon. Okay, we're a little late on the burn because I accidentally time warped too far, but here we are. We, we do have a good approach, assuming it's still a good approach. And... Ignition. Okay, and... Well, okay, it shut down well on time. We haven't quite got a rendezvous yet. All right, I'm not gonna wait on the RCS separation. And again. So how are we doing? 8.3 degrees, well that's not bad. Uh, the periapsis is a little bit high. Can bring that down a bit. That increases our inclination difference to 10 degrees but we can probably fix that once we get into the SOI certainly we can fix it at that descending node there since we hit that before we hit our periapsis if we wanted to okay well let's get on over there okay I made a minor adjustment of about 20 meters per second and we're approaching the moon currently our uh, one of our nodes is close to periapsis, so that's convenient. We'll do the orbital burn and inclination adjustment at the same time. Uh-oh. We've lost connection. Uh, that's interesting, considering how many things we have. Well, I guess it's not that much. We need more stuff around the moon clearly. Anyway, uh, our P 
Periaps is still a little bit ahead, so we have time to reacquire. Let me just plot it out. Remembering, of course, MacJeb can handle it even if we don't have a connection. Okay, there's sort of an encounter going on there. Anyway, I'm not going to belabor the point even without the uh, connection. We will try and do this as quickly as possible. We've got other important things to do after all. Okay, here we go. Okay, well I can't activate SAS, but I don't want Smarty SS wandering with the node. So, we'll slow down there. I don't know if I can target without control. Yeah, yes I can. Okay, closest approach distance going down. And we have connection now. Just in time. Let's have some stability. Okay, it looks like 10-ish well, kilometers. Very successful burn. Okay, that's all right. Eight kilometers. Wow, seven point nine nine nine. Somehow. Okay, time to avoid passing right by it. And ignition. Okay, here we are, and we are lining up with the docking port. I decided to go with docking it on one of the Apollo docking system ports because we were sort of aimed at it anyway, so it was the easiest. And I want to get this done quickly. My mouse right-click button seems to be sort of losing it. Um, you can see I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, the cursor changes when I right-click. So you can sort of see, anyway, it's a little bit sticky is all I'm saying. So yeah, I might need a new mouse. Okay, I think we have connection there. Very good. RCS off. We don't want the whole station rotating or anything. And we've made our delivery. So Attack Life Support says 223 days worth of food. So we're all good there. Spaceport 2, uh, 142 days. We've got the craft built for that. We've got the resupply vessel already built. Let me just check on our timing here. Uh, yeah, it gives us, uh, doing both Titan shots gives us 20 days. We'll have to watch out for, I mean, we're just entering the SOI of Saturn. So probably by the time we get to Saturn and Periapsis, it'll be much more than 20 days. So we'll have to make a new maneuver to see about that or reach Titan since these looked like they were aimed for Titan. Anyway, let's take care of this Ganymede lander mission and we'll see how that goes. Okay, well I really didn't want the thrusters firing but hopefully that didn't change much but here is our Ganymede lander mission and we should probably start time warping so it doesn't do more to adjust its current position as it seems to want to fire the thrusters and the signal delay is such that it would take 35, 30, 30 odd minutes uh, for me to command the RCS to turn off and the SAS to turn off. Well, I guess I could have just uh, activated Smart ASS, which would also turn off SAS. Anyway, we're going to enter Jupiter SOI in 18 days and then we are going to encounter the maneuver node in a little bit longer than that. We don't have to worry about orientation or power because, oh wait, Spaceport 2 should not be running out of... What, what's Spaceport 2 again? Wait a minute. No, that's the Earth orbit, 136 days. I guess that's 10% of its capacity or something. Okay, but it's not really running out of food. It's just less than it ought to be. We should probably queue something else up, but I'd actually like to wait until we get some more technology unlocked. If 
we take a look. Come on, Kerbal Construction Time. Um, I want this science tech so that we can get the scanners from that and then use those, you know, build our probes to deploy those. So that's why I'm not building anything else right now. And that those kinds of probes will probably be the ones that will go out on the Voyager transfer window. So we can scan all the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and such. Okay, here we go in the SOI. And we are making an adjustment to better match the orbit of Ganymede. And burn. <laughs> Okay, we really don't want to use too much fuel. Is that good enough? Looks pretty convincing to me. Yeah, that, that looks like a pretty good match right there. So when we add maneuver and get into orbit, we'll have 3.2 there, but that'll be easily corrected. So we'll just add that to that. Flatten out. Wait, there we go. That gives us a periapsis there. But leaves our orbit quite far out. Maybe we can go around once. No. Looks like we'll have to take that one. At least we've got one. But that'll leave us with a lot of burning to do once we arrive. Maybe we should just plot it all out. That's in 65 days. That'll still be the next thing that we do. We won't be turning to the Titan shots just yet. Maybe we'll get this done. Oop. But let's be careful, we don't want to mess this up. We have a contract for this one. And it was pretty lucrative with a really bad penalty, so... We have to make sure we have to land on Ganymede and send the telemetry analysis. We especially don't want to be caught without communication, for instance. Okay. So we'll have a periapsis there. I don't know if that's the best place to have a periapsis, but then we'll need to do a burn to make orbit of how much? 959, well it's not bad, it's not bad. So let's just get this first burn ready, and then that one is in 77 days, yeah. So we'll be doing that, well this Titan shot's in 74 days, geez. Okay, well we have to prioritize things and be careful about our timing then. Okay, so there's that. But now that we're completing science tech, let me get a probe being built with that science tech. So let me go back to the Space Center and time warp that 26 days and design that. Okay, well, after an extremely long and arduous design process, I've got MapSat 1 and MapSat 2. I'm not going to go over them right now. I'll uh, do that in flight when they launch. But it's basically they're just uh, one of the survey scanners on top of a uh, very big rocket meant to be sent to Jupiter or Saturn. Uh, MAPSET-1 has substantially less delta V and is on a smaller rocket, hence it's you know shorter build time. MAPSET-2 is on a much larger rocket, so it's more likely to be successful uh, at getting to its destination. MAPSET-1 is pretty tight on the delta Vs, that's all I'll have to say about that. But yeah, the only instrument on them is a survey scanner, and those are 0.2 tons apiece. So they're pretty heavy if you add in the antennae, the um, RTGs, and everything. Okay, so without further ado, let's turn back to the Ganymede lander, now approaching Ganymede's orbit. And then we can handle its capture around Jupiter. Okay, so we've done some time warping, and we are now... About four hours away from the node. I'm gonna get rid of the alarm. 
so it doesn't bug us. Alarm clock, go away now. Okay. Trying to find where Jupiter is. There it is. Okay, good. So we're all set, it looks like. And we don't have to worry about the signal delay for just doing this burn. Well, it's a little bit tight. You can see um, we'll need about 140 meters per second for the next stage to complete it, really. But mostly it's in here. Well, I'd rather do the bulk of the burn on time rather than start early in anticipation of the staging. Okay, here we go. Let us turn to the node. Hmm, it's not letting me click on Ganymede for some reason. Okay, anyway. Let's jump out, settle, and... <laughs> We'll have that stage at the same time as separation there. It'll take half an hour anyway. Okay, here we go. And we should just go ahead and stage at this point after this is done. Actually, I could send the stage command now, but I'll wait. Okay, there we go. All right, node. And let's continue this burn. Not quite at the right place, but in respect to the entire orbit, it's not that big a difference. Okay, well, we have an encounter. We are crashing into Ganymede. I think we can back off of that a bit. Of course, we could just go straight in and land. We are trying to land after all, but it's probably safer to get into orbit first anyway. Okay, but we do want to be low so that we can make good landing out of it. Okay, well, there we go. We've got an encounter with Ganymede. Let us add an alarm for that. Because we have to do that Titan shot maneuver in eight days first but so far so good we've got 2457 left and that's not including the probe zone fuel let me just verify that that's the case but I think this is just the Gemini lander engine fuel right here yeah the probes own fuel is locked right now in total we actually have not that much more wait no there must be another tank I'm missing there it's not just that. It's also this. There we go. 5,178. So that's what we've got to... You know, let me lock that too. So that's quite a lot in order to land that Ganymede. So this is looking good. And that means that the other mission... You know, we've launched other Ganymede lander missions as backups. Those could land at the other uh, moons. Callisto would be easier. Uh, Europa would be marginally harder. But yeah, there is another one coming in there, and we could easily launch another one. I wonder if we've already got one built. Uh, not not yet, but maybe we should. Maybe we should build uh, just another one of these Ganymede landers and have it ready, or a bunch of them, and have it ready for the Voyager transfer window and land them on places. We'll see. Anyway to the Titan shot. Okay, I just heard an explosion. I was turning to Titan shot. And yep. Titan shot just exploded. Um Right. Well, that just happened. We've got the other Titan shot coming. Uh, maybe I shouldn't turn to that just yet. Now I did zip up the save after uh, making orbit with the Ganymede lander. So if there are some techniques to avoid this explosion, I did. I, I went to the tracking station and I turned to it from there. I didn't use curve alarm clock. Oh, there's a sort of indicating. Oh, catastrophic failure. Right. 
Um, yeah, so I can sort of do something else to avoid that, perhaps, if you guys have suggestions. Maybe, maybe, yeah, since I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, maybe I should uh, leave it here for now. We resupplied the moon, we got the Ganymede lander ready uh, in orbit around Jupiter, and uh, in the next episode I will be landing that, assuming it doesn't blow up. Uh, but I could restore the save. I'll, I'll, let me try a few things and see if anything prevents that from exploding. That might be a good idea. But definitely we don't want to turn to... Maybe we should see if we can make orbit with Ganymede, the Ganymede lander first. But then if uh, you guys have suggestions for how to save that first Titan shot then I probably shouldn't uh, proceed, so... Alright, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll wait until I see whatever suggestions come up for that. And again, I, I did zip up and save right before there, because we had made orbit, so... Yep, alright, well, that's troubling, but this is a very complicated save. Let's take a look at the tracking station to show you what that looks like right now. Now, I do manually delete anything that would have deorbited, but uh, even if we remove the communication lines... Uh... Oh, there they are. Every version of Remote Tech, the communication lines options go into a different corner. It's... okay, there we go. Okay. So this is just the the pros. We have 101 of those. You can see what we've got going here. And again, manually I go through and see what would have deorbited. But if it's in solar orbit, it wouldn't have. So it's, it's sort of stuck there. I could get rid of it. I mean, that's 21 years. That's like at the beginning of our space program, Lance was launched. But then again, it's sort of a historical artifact. Look at all these. Look at all these. It's quite a, quite a record. Of course, if we keep them like this, there's an increased chance that everything is going to explode or otherwise end up in the wrong orbits. So that's the trouble. Some of them are just spent stages, like this, this probe thingy. Maybe I'll get rid of those. They're not the main mission anyway. This one's orbiting the Earth, but it's in a very high orbit, as you can see. Anyway, I'll have to think about that. And that's not debris. Those are all stuff with probe cores on. There's also debris, but there's less debris than the actual probes right now. I, I'm always of two minds about clearing all this stuff up, because first of all, th this stuff isn't going to deorbit anyway. Uh, I've checked them. They're basically gonna stick around for a little while longer. Some of them hundreds of years, some of them probably thousands of years. Yeah. In a way it's incentive for me to make sure I deorbit stages, but maybe we're a little bit too far gone for that. Okay, anyway. On that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.